What's up guys and welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, we're gonna be hacking in to the computer system on my Audi S3 using the OBD11. So I've heard some things about this. Seems like a really cool way to change quite a few different electronic controls within the S3. I did something similar to this when I had my Toyota Supra using the Beamer Code app. You're able to tweak all sorts of things. So this, I picked this up on Amazon. I'll have it linked down below. This one I got is the starter pack. So it is easy removable, comes with a device, and it comes with 100 credits. Probably can't read that, but this one is a starter pack, so you get the 100 credits, which means I can probably do like 10 different tweaks to the S3. Now, after installing the new exhaust system on the S3, I feel like this car might have already had some programming done to it. I had to talk with the old owner of this car, and they said that the previous owner before them may have done some sort of tweaking to the car, because I'm not quite sure if uh, the seatbelt chime has never turned on, engine start stop has never worked on this. And I noticed obviously the sunroof opens with the key fob button. I think that's something you can change. And the exhaust valve might stay open. So I'm not too sure. We're gonna find that out using this app now. But let's go ahead and open this thing up and see what we can do on the S3. All right, so to now work on this OBD11, all it is is this little tiny OBD2 Bluetooth adapter. So we're gonna just pop that into the port, which is right underneath the footwell, and then it'll turn on, you'll see a red ring glowing. From there, just turn on the ignition of the car, the electronics, and then I guess I'll walk it through with you guys. Uh, you need to download the app, of course, from the Google Play Store or the Apple App Store. And as you can see, it'll turn on. And I think right there, we just hit connect. So you can see it comes up on the bottom here. This lower one is a friend that I messed with the other day, but this top one, you can see how it's blue. That should be this one. And then now, firmware update. So I'll just go ahead and hit update. And there's my 100 bonus credits that were with this kit. So confirm that, detecting vehicle. So from here, I guess we can just scan the car read anything with the car and it'll just continue to go through i guess 24 different things we got two problems found so i wonder what that'll be maybe have to reset something within the car but this app you're able to do a lot of controls like that like we're about halfway there but this is one of those apps where like i said you can do the controls like resetting check engine lights things like that scanning the car itself um, and then tweaking a lot of different electronics. So it'll be kind of interesting to see what all is available. I have played with the app to scroll through to see what's available, but now let's go ahead once this wraps it up and we can exactly see what we can change. So I wonder what these problems are because there's no check engine lights on the car. It passes normal inspection and everything. Let's just tap that. So air conditioning, multimedia, and the engine are all red. So we have a fault code. Let's see exactly what it is. So exhaust door valve two. So that's what I was kind of noticing in the uh, exhaust video when I installed the AWE. I couldn't quite tell if the exhaust valve was opening or closing, but clearly there has been something done. And when I talked with the previous owner, she said that the Audi dealer, when she bought it, had to reset something in the car. That way they could sell it to her with the certified pre-owned warranty. So there was definitely some sort of tuning or flashing done from the first owner. I am the third owner of it. Let's clear that fault and get rid of that one. Hopefully this resets things back to normal. And let's go into the air conditioning. I don't know what kind of fault there's gonna be for air conditioning. The button's an operating unit. Uh, yeah, I don't know exactly what that would be, but it does work fine. But let's go ahead and just clear it all so we can at least reset the car and kind of get it back to normal. And then lastly, multimedia. And this could all be from the previous owner. Satellite radio, I've never actually even used the radio on this car, I just use Bluetooth. But I'll go ahead and just clear that one anyway, just to further reset everything in the car. So to now start messing with it, you can tap vehicle and this will come up with your actual car and everything like that. And then you're just gonna tap apps right now. And this is where you can start tweaking a whole lot of different things. Let's scroll down and check out that exhaust. We may have just reset it. So hopefully that is back to the stock way and that way I can at least uh, use the active exhaust the way it's supposed to. But there's stuff in here for your differential, all sorts of different things. So exhaust flap, you can basically have it on or off. On is just the normal active design. Off is disabled to where basically if you shut the car off, I believe in dynamic mode, you can have it permanently stay on. So let's change value 
and C. Currently it is in the on position, which means normal, because that's what I want. So we're gonna leave that on, hopefully me clearing that fault earlier, hopefully that actually fixed that issue. So the seatbelt warning, so mine I don't believe is even on. So let's see what it is. Currently it is off, yep. So the previous owner, the first owner certainly used this app because this car does not have that right now. So if I go to USA, that would turn it back on. I like it off because when I get in the neighborhood, if I turn my seatbelt off, that is nice. So this one is for the electronic differential lock. You can adjust how you'd like it to go from standard, which is normal, all the way into a stronger one. I'd have to learn more about exactly how I'd want that to set up, but that is pretty cool for performance. Sound duct or whatever the heck that is. Uh, this is the fake engine sound. So right now, it is 100% on. I'm gonna turn that off. Now that I have a full exhaust on this car, or at least a catback exhaust, I'm gonna activate that and turn that off. So now we're not gonna get fake engine noises through the speaker of this car anymore. And that's actually something I did on my Toyota Supra. I turned that off just because the exhaust on the car sounds good. I don't need fake engine sounds. And just to double check, currently is off. So we have shut that off now. Uh, what else, mirror dip. That might be something to get just because these mirrors are kind of small. So I'm gonna turn that on. Uh, hopefully I can make it to where they don't go too low like on the Supra. Uh, that should be pretty cool. DRLs, throttle pedal response. So this is super cool. I will say the car is a little laggy. It could really use a pedal commander, but I'm gonna turn that into the responsive mode and we'll test drive it in a little bit to see how that changes it. But that might help out quite a lot for this car. Sunroof action via remote. So mine does open, it cracks it open at least. So right now it is on tilting, so I'm gonna like it nice and open. So we will activate, open the sunroof with the remote. That way all my windows and the entire roof will pop open with that. Steering response, that's pretty cool. However, I like how it does change in the uh, different drive modes, so I'll leave it there. All the drive settings are able to adjust as well. So this one, increased traction, reduced noise. Again, I'd wanna learn more about that, but that's a pretty cool one for driving. Lock unlock sound settings. So Lauren had an Audi A3 and she liked how it beats when it locks. So right now, this just makes the little quiet chirp noise, but I'll just do the horn short. And that way when we lock the car, it makes a little bit louder noise than just a little chirp noise. All right, so let's do a few tests. Let's lock the car and see what that sounds like. All right, I think I just turned that one completely off now. It makes no noise, so we're gonna readjust that. Let's unlock the car, see if the center then opens all the way. That should work. Windows and sunroof, there we go. So before the sunroof would just crack or just tilt, now it opens all the way. So I like that feature, I'm glad I did that. I don't know if it'll do it when I lock the car or not. There we go. So you're able to adjust that with this app. So that is a really cool touch to see. So just driving the car around a little bit in the neighborhood, I'm still a little unsure on the exhaust valve ex exactly how it's supposed to work. For those of you with these cars, let me know. Is it supposed to kind of automatically open and close? Seems like under cold start, it'll open, but once I start driving, it closes, but once I hit 3000, it seems to open. Now that throttle response seems to help a little bit. When I give it more gas now, it definitely is more responsive, so that is nice. Before, you had to press it halfway, and then it went. So I think that definitely did something. Auto folding mirrors, I don't think this car is even equipped with them, so that did not do anything. And then the lock unlock thing, I gotta fix that and make it make a sound. But in the different drive modes, it doesn't really make a difference for the exhaust valve. The valve just kind of opens automatically, so I'm still really curious how that's supposed to work. So back at it again, we're gonna go through them again and check out that lock one. So we had it on original to start, and then I did the short horn. Let me try via sounder. The one thing I don't like about this app, every time you change any value, you have to do one of these credits. With the Beamer code on the Supra and the other BMWs, you didn't have to do that. So that's what it did before. Let's go back to the horn now, turn it back on. So then back to the normal one, we'll just do via horn normal. Like I said, depending on your car, depending on your options, not every single thing will be applicable. And now let's see what it sounds like. It seems like the only ones that I really was able to adjust just based off of how my car is set up. Got the sunroof to open all the way up with the unlock button, which is pretty cool. I can't make it do the horn when I lock it, so it's just that little beeper noise, so that's all I get. Um, the throttle response did seem to be a little bit sharper just playing with it. Exhaust valve, still really unsure how this car is working. I might just uh, work with AWE and get the actual remote kit. That way I can bypass the factory uh, electronics for the exhaust valve and just open and close it myself. I think that might be a little bit easier. 
mirrors are not folding in this car, so that didn't do anything. So there's a pretty good amount of adjustments. And then of course resets if you have check engine lights and things like that. So if you do need some sort of cool at home diagnostic tool, this OBD 11 seems to be a really good tool for Audis. And you can really deep dive into a lot of neat adjustments. There's so many different lighting control things, uh, the screen stuff like that. I think my car, like I said, already had a few things tweaked on it from the first owner. But there's a quick video for you guys showing you what the OBD 11 app how it works and what it's like on the Audi S3, getting a few things squared away. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, stay tuned for plenty more, and then I'll have that linked from Amazon down below. I bought the starter pack, so those 100 credits um, were easy and convenient to use, and it's only like three bucks a credit if you have to buy extra. So there's three different ones on there, but that's the one that I went with just because you get the 100 credits. But anyways, hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you in the next one.